Hi guys, I can see the internet's going to be an issue for us, so I'm going to talk quick to get this on and popping. I'm Latasha McDowell, your local real estate expert here in Tallahassee, Florida. Oh, my thing all put this on. Oh, a little backing anywho so last night we were talking about um a, a myriad of things we talked about trade lines we talked about how to is it true you can't buy a house for two years after bankruptcies yes it is true how unless you're able to get the bankruptcy removed now it is possible to get a bankruptcy removed it's all in a matter of knowing how to get the bankruptcy removed so the first thing that you would do in that case would be making sure that all the information was accurate but we'll get into that in a second I just want to recap from last night if you missed some things. We'll talk about bankruptcy in a little second. Okay, so last night we were talking about how to have points added to your credit bearer report um, to increase your FICO score. The way that we do that is by adding our rent, utilities, car insurance, um, cable, cell phone. Those are the way that we can improve our credit bearer report and, it, and have your FICO number escalate rather quickly. It can go anywhere from 40 to 100 points. On average, with my clients, I've been seeing that their scores go up 40 to 100 points, really. Um, you can have your rent, if you've been paying it on time, to go back as far as two years and get credit, get credit for the two years of payment. So it appears as though it's a long-term loan that you've had on the account. So don't pass up an opportunity to, to improve your score based upon work that you've already done and improving your husband what are you doing? Just trying to give you the best optimum look. Right, I feel like I must like mess with my vertigo for a second. Anywho Might have. Anywho like so one? yes. Anywho, so you can go ahead and accomplish that. How's that? That's amazing, husband. All right. I like amazing. Okay. You can accomplish that by adding things to your credit bureau report, like your rent going to the website. It's prbc.com. That's P as in ball, P as in Paul, R as in Rand, C as in cat, B as in ball. prbc.com. On that website, they're changing their name and their image to connect, C-O-N-N-E-C-T. So if you see connect, don't be thrown off. You can screenshot it. That's the website, .com. And you can add your rental payments, your car insurance, your uh, utilities, your cell phone, your cable. So get credit for the things that you've been paying on time. However, if you have not been paying them on time, do not add it. It is not going to be a help for you to have negative information reported on your credit bureau report. So I don't care if you were only late one time in two years. That late is not work that so don't do it but if you have not been late and if you have a more modern um, rental company even if you've been paying your rent in cash it doesn't matter what they'll do is you'll put in whom your landlord is and then they will contact your landlord and verify your payment history okay so it doesn't actually you know need your lease to be uploaded unless they ask you for it. I haven't had a situation where they've asked the person for the actual lease. However, they do, they will ask you for your landlord information, okay? Now, if any of these bills are in your mama name, your cousin name, your brother name, or your son name, it will not work for you. However, it'll work for them. So the bills must be in your name and they must be paid on time in order for you to receive credit to boost your credit score. Now, when I tell you it's going to boost your score, it is going to boost your score. You will have to give the entities 30 days to update, just like your credit cards update every 30 days and report to the credit bureau. This is like any other loan type that will need to be updated and report to the credit bureau. But once it reports your payment history, again, if you've been paying your rent on time for years, get credit for all that. Let it make your FICO score skyrocket, okay? Again, this is the website. You can screenshot it. So that's how you go ahead and boost your credit score. Okay? Share with your friends. Share with your family members. You know, there's no need in being a hoarder of information. So now that you've learned something new, share the new information. Okay? So hopefully you guys will jump on that opportunity and 
improve your credit score so you can do things like purchase a home. A lot of you are very close to where you need to be to become a new homeowner, but your credit is pulling you behind. Also, a lot of you guys are struggling with your debt to income ratio, right? And people are trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I take care of that? Try to try to attack your cards or whatever your debt is in the fashion of taking out did Josh put da 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 da? Dang it, King is here. I can't. I cannot. Anywho, hi Josh. Um. So attack the smaller cards first, then move towards your major cards. If you start towards the cards that have the largest balance, and you won't see any changes immediately, then you'll feel defeated. So we're going to take this as a step by step process when working on our credit. Start with the smaller, going to the largest. Okay. If in the event that you have late payments, you can always send them a goodwill letter. If you don't have the goodwill letter or don't understand what a goodwill letter is, one, if you don't have the goodwill letter, if the link in my bio is for my book, it has the goodwill letter in there. Yes, sir. Hello, your highness. Welcome. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Nevertheless, a good word letter will go to the lender or go to your credit card company and say, okay, back in November of 2018, I was late on some payments. However, since that time, as you can see, I have made on-time payments. And even in some instances, if you have, you paid more than the minimum due. Um, you can say at that time you were experiencing some type of crisis. I think we all have the pandemic as a great crisis as to why we may have fallen behind on our bills. And let them know that, you know, going forward, you will continue to be a good steward of your credit. And to please go ahead and delete that late payment as you have been a loyal, long-time customer. That's in short what... Uh, the goodwill letter pretty much says and asking them to remove it as a courtesy for you. Um, again, if you're needing a copy of that letter, the link in my bio, my book has that letter in it. So if you are disputing something such as a collection or a charge off, that could fall into two different categories. If you're wanting to have it removed and you're, you're never late, sweetheart. I'm going to recap. Um, if you're dealing with a charge-off, and good evening, if you're dealing with a charge-off or a collection, you can always, you know, dispute the information because one thing I want to keep in the forefront of your minds. So if you're dealing with a charge-off or you're dealing with a collection agency, number one, you enter into a contract with the actual credit card company or the holder. You didn't enter into a relationship with these collection agencies. So when you're sending them a dispute letter and you're asking, are you sending them a dispute or a validation letter? Or if you catch it in the beginning, that's a, hey, can, hey one, one, um, if you catch it in the beginning, that's the dunning period before it hits your credit and you tell them to verify the debt. Sending you a statement is not the verification of a debt, okay? So again, you can look these, you can look these letters up online or Again, I have the book that has them all in there um, because you can dispute it. Hi, fun mom. You can dispute the information. It's showing them that you need to validate the debt if it's in the dunning period. If it goes to collection, you're still going to dispute it and tell them to validate the debt. And I don't mean validating the debt again. A statement is not a validation of a debt. They have a, these collection agencies will print out your statements from now to El Segundo. That's not a validation of debt, not according to the Fair Credit Act rules. Um, and that law. No, it's not. If you're challenging medical bills, medical bills is a violation of HIPAA, which is the Health Information Portability Act. They have no right to put anything in regards to your medical information on your credit bureau because that's public information, which is a violation. So I have that letter, those two letters in my book as well. So the thing I was explaining to you guys last night, hi, Sharita. The thing I was explaining to you guys last night, and I've said multiple times, is that credit is a game. In order to win the game, you have to know the rules, right? And I don't expect you guys to be credit experts or anything like that, but I do expect you to obtain the knowledge that you can in order to live a more financially healthy life. Now that we've learned the error of our ways, we should not have to continually pay for our past, right? It's like, damn, even prisoners get out of jail. High stress. So... We don't have to, hey, Lotta, 
we don't have to stay in this financial prison for the rest of our lives, right? If you're wanting to pay to have an item deleted, you, there's a pay and delete letter. Again, we don't have to we don't have to suffer. We do not have to suffer in purgatory of bad credit. <laughs> you need help with your business credit? Okay, I got you. So, hey Pooh, hey Danny. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about bankruptcies, which bankruptcies can be removed. Okay, the first thing that you need to do when you are challenging your bankruptcy, you need to find out who's the hold of that information. And I don't mean Equifax, TransUnion, or Experian. I mean there are third-party credit bureaus that handles and validates debts for the big three agencies, right? So you just got a little divorce and don't know where to start. At the beginning, sweetheart, and this is the beginning. Okay, I got to pay two different companies. If I get starting the process over the dispute process, no, baby. So this is what you need to do. You need to find out who's holding that public record information, and you need to dispute it with them. You need to ask for a copy. Okay, I'll get to that. We, um, you need to ask them for a copy of it if you don't have a copy of your actual papers that went along with the bankruptcy. You're going to look to see if they have your name correct, your address correct. You're going to look to see if they actually reported your whole social security number or last four numbers of your social security number. You need to make sure all that information is accurate because if any of it is wrong, then they have to remove it. Okay? So, there's a whole process to disputing bankruptcies um, that I won't be able to capture all in one live. So you can always schedule an appointment with me and I can walk you through the entire process. Okay, but bankruptcies can be removed. There's a way to get that information um, off your credit bureau report by using the third party credit bureaus, but I'd have to explain that in great detail, like on a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it's a more tedious process. So that's for bankruptcies. So don't forget your key takeaways in regards to personal credit to adding more points to your FICO score is to go to the website prbc.com, prbc.com. Another way is going to Self Inc. That's Self Inc. It's uh, you're paying yourself the money, but it reports on your credit bureau report as a loan. And at the end of the period, like if you're approved for $500,000 or $1,000 after you've paid that much to yourself, then you're able to get all your money back or you can have it um, as a secured card. And another way to add points is secured card. You can go to Capital One. They're very good about having secured cards, okay? So Stress to Wealth says that she has a voluntary repo in 2018 that keeps double dutching on her report. There is a way that we can dispute that. I would suggest that you schedule one on one with me. So we're going to switch because typically Wednesdays is for business credit. So do we have any more questions about personal credit before I move on to business credit? This is how the schedule typically goes, guys. Tuesdays and Thursdays personal, Monday and Wednesdays business. I just wanted to recap about the personal credit because I got a lot of messages today saying that they missed the live last night. So I just wanted to recap that and let you guys know how to help yourselves by reporting that information. Okay, so that's for personal for right now. Now we're going to move on to our business hats. Okay, so you started a business. Congratulations. You're an entrepreneur. So, welcome to the Entrepreneurs Club. We're an elite force over here. So, as an entrepreneur, there... Oh, you're very welcome. Do I even have a chance of getting approved for a decent lease since the scores didn't change much? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, girl. Call me. Or schedule, or schedule an appointment. I have some times available. I want to say Friday morning, and we can we can work this out. Trust me. 
Um, so back to business credit. So, okay. Have you gotten your LLC or decide you're going to be an S Corp or a C Corp or INC? Have you established that first? That's step one. Step two, IRS.gov. IRS.gov, get your EIN number. That's your employee identification number. It is free. Okay? Step three, get your Duns and Bradstreet number. Their website is D as in David, N as in Nancy, B as in boy, dot com. You'll need that. Next step. Get your NAV account. The NAV account is going to be for your business credit to monitor it, right? It's a free service for businesses. The Duns and Bradstreet number, you need that. Okay. The Duns and Bradstreet number that you need that is for the purpose of they will rate your account. They will rate your business. Okay. The next thing, after you've done that, have you opened your business checking account? Okay. Hello, everyone, Sha. You need to open your business checking account, and your business checking account needs to be separate at a completely separate, different bank than your personal checking account. You don't want to be tempted to cross mingle funds. Okay. The next step opening up a net 30 line of credit. So, if you don't know what a net 30 is, a net 30, there's net 30s, net 60s, net 90s. These are companies that you open trade lines with to have a credit, right? They report on your business's credit. Now, remember when you're establishing all of these things, you're keeping your personal information separate. You're not going to do anything that asks you to use your personal information to be a guarantor of your business because your business by law, is its own separate entity. Okay? Yes, I have my LLC, EI number, DNB. I also have NAB in the business account. Okay. So the net 30, these are companies that will bill you in 30 days, net 60, 60 days, net 90, 90 days. Okay? One of the top three companies that I use, um, there's a whole bunch of them. I have a TikTok maybe like about 15 TikToks ago that lists us all eight. Um, so you can just go and go one to the count to 15 and maybe, you know, it's back there. Um, nevertheless, the first company is Uline, U-L-I-N-E, Uline. And these companies I'm giving you, you can also use them as your vendor. Like if you're having a business where you have to send out mailers, like I get my mailers from them because I mail out, stuff right um i mail out prizes and stuff that i send out i get envelopes sometimes i'll send a letter to someone to keep them encouraged i'm an old school girl i like to write letters and i like to put wax sealing on my stuff anywho so you can actually use these people for vendors if they have boxes that you can use to mail out things to them if you need crepe paper to go into your packaging. They have all kind of stuff. So Uline is the first company. The second company is Crown Office. Crown Office, like a crown. C-R-O-W-N, Office. Crown Office. The next company is, um, and I went blank. <sighs> Uline. If you're doing like a shirt business or t-shirt or any kind of clothing business, Shirtsy is a good one. S H I R T S Y, Shirtsy. They're a good one. And another company is Creative Analytics. Now, be forewarned with Creative Analytics. They offer some amazing products to for digitally for your company. But they cost some major money. Okay. Another company is Granger, G R A N I G R, Granger. They do a great job too at Net 30 account. Now, let me teach you something. When you're working with your business credit and you order something, 
you want to pay it 10 days before it's due. Business credit works a little funny from personal credit. So you want to pay that early. Okay. And I want you to be mindful when you're ordering things from this site. Again, you don't want to order a bunch of stuff. You just want to start your line of credit off. But when you're ordering something, order something that you actually need. Like, do you need a, a stamper with your business name on it? And don't forget, you can also try to get an account at Home Depot. Now, not Home Depot. Um, Office Depot. Once, if it gets to the point where they ask you for your personal information, it's time to back out. Okay? After you've established your net 30s, I would say for about 30 to 60 days, maybe even 90 to show that you have something showing as your trade line that starts to um, build you a credit base. You can also get a secure card in your business name. Yep. You can get a secure card in your business name. You can also apply for a fleet card. Um, for me, I've found Chevron to be easier than any others, um, but that's what worked for, pe for me. Some people try Exxon. Um, I went with Chevron. That was what worked for me. Okay? But it comes in stages. Now, while you're working on your business, do know if you're wanting to get funding by a lender, i.e. a bank, you will need to have a business plan. Now, in order to have a business plan created for you, you have several different options. You can create one yourself by going to sba.gov. They have a guideline out there that tells you about it. I'm about to mispronounce this company's name, but is it Fervor? F-I-R-V-E-R? Fervor? I'm pretty sure I'm murdering that. But you can, they have freelancers. So you can hire a freelancer to create it for you. Hell, you can hire a freelancer to create your web page so you can at least have a landing page for a very modest dollar amount. So there's a lot of things out there. Also, the SBA also has a mentoring program, which usually is comprised of people who have retired from the industry that were successful that you can sign up and you can have them be your mentor. There are a lot of options out there. I'm sorry, did I get the spelling of that girl? I'm pretty sure I jacked it up. Let me get my laptop because I'm sure. I'm not sure. I'm sure. I spelled it wrong and I don't want to give y'all wrong information. Give me a second. It's fervor. What? I'm I'm not gonna tell you how much. Look. Y'all gonna call me one time about my misspellings. Why my son got little girls texting him on my iPad? Anybody know why? Okay, it's F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. Thank you for your patience. But they have freelancers who do pretty much everything. Like, I don't know if you can, guys can see this, but they have logo design, web pages, all kind of stuff. Voiceovers for your books. Everything. Graphic design, video animation, business. You can hire a freelancer. In some cases, little of nothing. For some cases, little of nothing to do what you need to have done in order to grow your business. Okay? So I hope that answered your question um, about how to get your business credit started and how to move it forward. But you're most certainly going to need to have a business plan, especially when you get to the point of wanting to have 
a bank to finance something for you, like a loan or something of that nature. They're going to want to know the who, the what, and when, the how. They're going to want to know about your prototypes. They're going to want to know about how you expect the business to grow, what methods are you using. They're going to want to know about how the management is set up. They're also going to want to know about, you know, how you anticipate advertising, your marketing dollars, and everything. Hi, my Joe wife here. I tried at home here in hot and it said my credit was. Oh, that helped a lot. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I also have a business plan. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. I need if if your question is about your credit, to look at your true credit score, Joe Willie Fair. Um, I would suggest you go to my FICO, that's M-Y-F-I-C-O, my FICO to find out what your true score is and to have um, things like your rent, utilities, and that things of that nature added to your credit bill report, you can go to prbc.com. That's prbc.com. You remember when can I get some water? Can I get some, a cup of ice then? Okay. For your credit score, typically, huh? Yeah, text the little girl, and please, it's 9 o'clock. Who will text nobody at 9 o'clock? I don't text nobody. Oh. Your credit score needs to be a minimum of at least um, 620s nowadays. Now, I have seen somebody who've gotten approved for a less than 620 credit score, but their debt-to-income ratio was extremely low. So, you can, um, it all depends on the lender, to be quite honest with you. It all depends on the lender. Also, if anyone is using Credit Karma to get your credit score, stop it right now. Stop it right now, I say. Stop it. Credit Karma is not accurate. So if you're looking at Credit Karma and you're thinking you have a 700, lies. They're lying to you, child. They are not telling you the truth. You need to go to a reputable site like my FICO, Identity Q, and get your real FICO number. Okay? Now keep in mind, my FICO, M-Y-F-I-C-O. That's my personal opinion. The reason why I like my FICO so much is because in actuality, you have more than three scores. How can they determine how much you are approved? For example, four hundred thousand dollars in that amount. That is a real cute what you have on. Oh, thank you, baby. Okay, so this is how. Hold on, must answer the question about my FICO. My FICO breaks your score down into subcategories, right? Because you have a different score for different types of trade lines. Okay, so for example, you'll have a score for purchasing vehicles. You have a score for credit cards and loans. Then you have a score for mortgages, right? Each different credit type has a different algorithm. My FICO breaks it down like that for you. M-Y-F-I-C-O. Yes, ma'am. You got it, Alice. My FICO. So it breaks it down for you. You want the cheapest one, which I think is twenty nine ninety five. It breaks it all down for you, and it also will tell you your utilization. It will tell you, you know, the different. I mean, it's just a tool that gives you so much information. I personally always recommend, you know, clients to get it, especially if they want to do a consultation with me. What I'll do is I go through it, like the they ask them to get it to me like a day before, and. They get it to it. They get it to me. I go over it. I already come up with a plan, implement it. So what you need to do. So when we meet and talk, I'm explaining everything to you and what you need to have taken care of and how to dissect it. That's what I do. But myfico.com. Now, let's talk about how... Um, let's talk about how they calculate how much home you can afford. They do that by calculating your debt to income ratio. Okay. What lenders do is they look at how much you make, right? And of how much you make, they take a look at all your debt. When they're looking at your debt, they're looking at credit card payments, 
outstanding loans, student loans, like um, if you have a car note, credit cards. They're looking at those payments each month. They're adding it up and they're dividing about how much you make. That's how they determine how much you can afford. So it goes back to the old adage that I always talk about is the lower your DTI, the lower your DTI, which is your debt to income ratio, the more buying power you have. The higher your credit score, the lower your interest is going to be. Now, when banks are calculating your debt to income ratio, they don't take into open sky. I've I've seen it before, but don't they do they charge you a monthly fee? Um but Keep in mind, banks and mortgage companies, they're not taking into consideration your rent, your utilities, daycare, car insurance, cell phone. They're not taking health insurance payments into consideration. They're not taking co-pays into consideration. So I help wherever in the United States, baby. Um, they don't take those things into consideration. So I always strongly advise people, although... The bank may say you're eligible for this amount. You don't have to spend every dime, right? Because you end up putting yourself in a situation. Why? Oh, okay. Why pay and go through all that trouble to get into a home, to get into it and possibly lose it because you can't afford it? That's cray cray. Right? When you're getting ready to purchase, the question is, what should I, what should I change my Navient payments to? The status. When you're getting ready to purchase a home, and I'm not going to say do this like six months in advance. You only need to do this maybe like a month or two in advance. Hi, Monique. You want to put them in an income-based repayment. An income-based repayment. Because once they're in an income-based repayment plan, the lender is going to calculate your payments versus a percentage of your student loans. So... Most of the time, your payments are going to be cheaper than what that percentage is. And usually, it's a percentage that range from 1% to 3%, depending upon what type of loan it is. However, income-based your payment plan is the best thing you want to have it in. Um, I understand that they may be in deferment right now because of the pandemic or forbearance or whatever the lingo is for it. Please keep in mind that once you get your home, you can put it right back in. Your car rental school so should they include my loan? They will include a percentage of your loan since she's currently in school. They will include a percentage of your loan because in reality, you're signing up for a 15 and 30 year mortgage, right? So the banks need to know that once you get out of school and once these loans go into repayment, you'll be able to afford to pay the loans and still pay for your house. So yes, they will consider it. Any other questions? So we've covered credit, personal credit. We've covered business credit. Now let's talk about the steps it requires for you to get into a home and the things that you actually need the funding for. You had to file bankruptcy, it has not been discharged yet. You need to wait for it to be discharged. How am I doing? I have been a little under the weather lately but I've been pushing through thanks for asking Tiff I've been pushing through schedule me a doctor's appointment for some labs but I've been pushing through I got too many clients not to push through <laughs> I gotta keep it together I have students on for when my son was in school, but the school closed there and now dismissed. Well, look at God. Now, that's a blessing, boo. That's a blessing. Now, make sure they offer all three of your um, credit reports now Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. And for the love of all that's good and holding people. Please do not dispute anything online. Not a thing gets disputed online. You guys know how to write. How do you get my service? What you can do is you can click the link in my bio. It's going to say it's bad, but it's really good. Click click OK. 
and then it's going to give you the option to sketch an apartment with me and also the book is out there if anyone needs to dispute letters so to buy a home you first need to add up all your debt all your debt that's appearing on your credit bear report I asked my son for some ice to go with this warm water and never appeared ice? yes let's have some warm water you ain't gonna drink it if it has some ice it came in here ice cold last night and you ain't drank it so you add up all your debt that's on your credit bureau report and then, well, all the payments on your credit bureau report and then you will divide it by how much you make. Yes, the link is in my bio. You'll do it. Okay. What? What are you doing? That's where your bio is. My hands are ice cold. Yeah, you said you want ice with the water. I want ice water. <laughs> I don't want cold hands. How do you improve your income when you are self-employed? Well, all the payments that were missed. What payments that was missed? Hold it doesn't work. So it's about how to reverse it all of the no, nah, not all the not all the payments that was missed, all your payments monthly because it's called debt to income ratio. So they're looking for what your monthly payments are and they're gonna you add that up and you divide that by the um You divide that by how much you make each month. Your gross. How do you improve your income when you are self-employed? How you do what? Improve your income if you're self-employed. Pay yourself more. If you have the revenue available, give yourself a raise. Or, there's a whole lot of people hiring right now. You even get a $1,000 bonus. You don't have to work full-time, but you can get your, like, a little part-time gig to save you up some change to get into the house. Or, you can start, you know, writing up your intellectual property and selling that. What are you doing? And what I mean by intellectual property, okay, we're all, you know, embarking on being an entrepreneur or we had first steps. So go back and document what your steps were so you can help people and you can sell it. Um, helping people to not make the same errors that you made. Oh, she said give me 100% grape juice. For what? Because I was telling her earlier I have been tired. I think my iron is low. And she said it helps with iron. It helps with iron? Mm-hmm. Sure. My mama gonna fix me some living onions. So now I want to get my score up to purchase a house. No. Uh -uh. The iron out the damn way. So now I want to get my score up to purchase a home and my own. So I need to get my score up first. Okay, so um when we talk about child, this is my husband all the time. This is not about him wanting attention. He is this ass clown. Who all said I want attention? Hey, babies. You wrong for that one. You got to March and seven five. You got to pre-approve the March and you're seven five home. Okay, we'll talk in a second. So, to improve your credit, um, if you're living on your own and you're paying your own rent, remember we got the PRBC.com. You can add your rent and utilities to your credit bureau school report to actually boost it up. Here's the website. Screenshot it. And you can go there and you can add your rent and utilities, your car insurance, well they tell them not to car insurance more, but your rent utilities, um, cell phone, and your cable. And it'll boost your score almost immediately. So you got pre-approved back in March and you haven't found a home. Why? Are you working with a realtor? There's a disconnect somewhere. I don't understand why you still haven't found a home since March. This is about to be June. That's 90 days. Your um, approval letter is about to expire. Why? What state is it? I don't know what state. 
And also a way to, I'm currently disappointed since January. How long does it take typically? Disputed since January. You know what, with disputed stuff, it can take a while. But the question is, how are you disputing it? If you're writing letters to the credit bureaus, um, are you sending them typed letters? Are you sending them handwritten letters? There's a difference because when you send a typed letter and it goes through the system, the system just catches it, reads it, and keeps it pushing. But if you change some things up, like highlighting stuff, underlining stuff, um, putting in handwriting, even, you know, just some minor changes, it'll, the system will read it as an error and kick it out and force a person to actually read it at the third party, I mean, at the credit bureaus. Then, you can also dispute things through the third party credit bureau, which is where you really should start first when you're disputing an item to figure out exactly who's holding the information and who's verifying it for the third, for the big three credit bureaus. So that's how that goes. You say your net income? Okay. He said, what it do, T? What's up? I still ain't got no water, y'all. Also, another way to add... My daughter is turning 19. She's been working for three years. She's thinking of a condo. That'd be a good investment. Um, of the three years, what does her credit look like? Like, did you add her to your credit to your cards, or did she establish a, cre a credit history? She needs to go to my five and see what her score is. In my opinion, first. Yeah, I'm just drinking room temperature's hot. Room temperature water at this point. Blink twice if you need help. Anywho, another way that you can help. Hey lady, you said something about increasing your score by 30 points. Yes, the website in yeah, the market is real special. Um, the mark the website is prbc.com and you can also improve your credit score by adding trade lines to your credit score. Here's the website. Screenshot it. You're gonna add your rent, utilities, car insurance, you um I said utilities, cable bill and cell phone bill, only if you're paying these things on time. And actually it may be um, done earlier. Yeah. So there's another way to improve your credit. It's by adding positive trade lines. My husband is the best who got me drinking this water. Okay. Um, when you're adding trade lines, Houses do keep increasing like every second. Um, but when you're adding trade lines, it not only gives you uh, that person's available credit, and especially if they have a low income to debt ratio on their credits. And you also get their history when you add trade lines. A lot of realtors set their um, their prices to make to cause bidding wars. Um, however, the thing that I would suggest for you to do is a lot of I want y'all to know. My husband knows I can't stand cold stuff, and he literally has his cold ass dead man hands on my leg. Attention speaker, now you have seen where your babies get it from. <laughs> yes, I do. My husband. Yes, they start bidding wars. So now, Josh says it's a family show. He think it is hilarious watching me jump because he know I cannot stand anything cold. Anywho, y'all, blink twice if you help. Help. So, thank you. It was the quickest thing I could put on today, to be honest with you. I really wasn't feeling that great. Y'all know what? Whoever wants him, he is available. Yeah, he is available. Anyway. I'm not available. But what is available?
We got halfway through this guy without it. Mm. Halfway through. They're available. <sighs> Contact me by her. <laughs> Thank you. Back to what I was saying. What were you saying, babe? I don't remember now. Oh, bidding wars. Bidding wars. Um, the price of lumber has gone down, so I hmm? suspect. Yeah, the price has of lumber. It? Yeah, hmm. within the last two weeks, um, the price of lumber has gone down. So, I feel like it may be better to build. My only issue with like building right now is they're building some beautiful homes. Don't get me wrong, but there's no yard space. Like, I grew up in a yard. Like we had a big ass yard, so that's maintenance. That's maintenance. When we kept the yard up with my mom. Oh. Here we go. That's what's missing here. I walked into the trap. Girl, I grew up in New Orleans. We had a huge yard. The average price here in DFW, three bedroom is three sixty. Three sixty for a three bedroom. How much do I need with bad credit? Well, here's the first thing in DFW. Dallas Fort Worth. Huh. So here's the thing. Um, I wouldn't say how much you need because as much money as you're going to use to spend to put on a large down payment because your credit is not up to par, why don't you use that? Your California has always been ridiculous. New York has always been ridiculous. Anywho, why don't you use that money to pay down your debt? Use the money to pay down your debt. Or you can always do a rent to own. Right? Oh, no, I'm sorry, lease to own is a proper term. Until you're ready. I'm saying the same thing, New York. I don't want my neighbors to be that close. Right. You sneeze and your neighbors say, God bless you. Who wants that? No, talking about the lumber sale in Louisiana, their prices. Or oh, their price gouging. Well, you know, one thing I can say about Louisiana. Being born and raised from there, people are pretty good at learning how to line their pockets at the expense of the underdog. Pretty damn good. I think the only state that beats Louisiana with that is probably Kentucky. Right? I'm just saying. 90% of Kentucky is underdogs. Right, 90% of Kentucky is underdogs. I'm talking about like the government and people in management and local government, the municipalities, they learned how a long time ago to abuse people to line their pockets. So, yeah. Maybe Florida is not. I'm in Florida. I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana. I spent 30 years of my life in New Orleans. I'm in Florida. I mean, they're crooked here. But most people here are cray-cray. But um, they're crooked. But, but here in Florida, they're mostly crooked with health care. But that's a whole different story. But anywho. Should I call creditors and offer them a side of the pay? We don't. Okay, see, first of all. Yeah, I could believe that in New York. Sweetheart, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to take nineteen ninety five and we're going to order Tasha book. Okay? Yeah. But Edwards is good. But then all the Edwards were good, though. But we're going to buy a Tasha book. And in Tasha book, it tells you that we're going to write letters. And, and also, even if you're going to talk to someone, how we're never going to say that the debt is ours. Right? We always say the alleged debt. Even if we're asking for a pay and delete, we're still going to say it's an alleged debt. Right? Now, we all know you did it. But when you start complaining, once you start taking accepting responsibility for it, you start a whole new different battle. Battle. Thanks. And Miss Linda, I saw you <laughs> slid in here. Hey, Pooh. Hey, Pooh. But the Edwards were good. You're right. Edwin and Edwards was good. Um, yeah. But. So. The book title is Good Credit, Bad Credit. Is it Niecy Nice? Niecy Nice? Hello. But I would always suggest rather than you and 
Am I right wrong? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Damn, I'm in my right wrong. Damn, I'm in my right wrong. They got a condo store. Um, but the books, what you want to do is you want to read, you want to, oh, you close on your house on Friday. Congratulations. Oh, and social security trying to sue you. Huh? That's the same person. Uh, uh-uh, it's not oh. different. Um, congratulations. Congratulations. Which one? For... Oh, what, what you mean, which one was? Who are you telling congratulations to? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know who you were talking to. I'm saying, what confused. are you congratulating? I am co- congratulating Maria Cook, 69. What happened? She is closing on her house on Friday. Well, we're moving on now. We're moving on now. To the side. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congrats. 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 <laughs> Hello, Junior Jackie. I want to say on behalf of everyone here in TikTok land, congratulations. We're happy for you. We're proud of you. And I am not going to cry. But yes, happy closing and congratulations. Enjoy your new home. I'm sure it's well deserved and you've worked hard and sacrificed for it. Congratulations. Congratulations. And that's what we do here. We are excited for everyone. Because one thing, everyone, every time someone else gets their pre-approval or close on their home, it's like they used to say around Christmas time when you hear a bell ringing. Okay, thank you. Miss Allen. It's like when you hear a bell ringing, that's when the angel gets their wings. It's a reminder to us that we can be next. Right? Gives others hope. Yes, it gives others hope. So for everyone that's been pre-approved, for everyone that's credit score has gone up, the more and from the more times you share when you have good things that happen, please share it. Okay, let us celebrate you. Because you give the other person hope, right? So if you are ready, let's work together. Let's book an appointment. Let's find out. Let's look at your credit. Let's see what we have to do. Let's come up with a plan. Let's implement it. Y'all, it's June. You still can be in your home for Christmas. Your pre approval it depends on your lender. Most of them are 90 days to 120 days. Oh, mom looks so beautiful right now. We're about to find out in a second because I'm about to let y'all go. But yes, if you're wondering about down payment assistance programs, you will Google your state plus down payment assistance and you'll find out everything that's available in your state. Looking for a new home is worth to sell or rent out my existing home. Well, it's going to depend upon what the price point is for your home. So what I would do is that I would um, have a realtor do a comparative market analysis for you. And go over the pros and cons with you. If you need a realtor in your area, reach out to me um, by sending me either a message, an email. Y'all, oh, by the way, I thought if you sent me a message in the past, I didn't respond. I wasn't ignoring you. I didn't know how to look at all of the message. Like, I just learned how to look at all of the message messages, I'm sorry. And I saw I had messages out there from forever. 
I did not know that you can. I'm thinking I could see everything when I look on my phone or my iPad, but I logged on to TikTok on a computer and I was like, damn. So I've been replying back to emails. I'm talking about emails, DMs, apologizing because I did not know. I thought I was seeing everything, but I didn't know I could see more if I logged on from a desktop. So now that I have, I have not been ignoring y'all. I just didn't know how to find y'all. And I apologize. Ooh. I know I have like so many in trouble. And I had a whole T pain moment today. I was like, ah. but um, yeah. You work full time, so you'll try to catch my lives. Okay. Also, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am working with um someone to make sure that my lives get updated to my YouTube channel. So that's gonna start to grow. Also, pretty soon. Um, thank you, sir. Between you and Miss Allen, y'all all me, and I appreciate it. I love y'all for it. Um, so that's that. So I'm I'm gonna launch off my um web page pretty soon. So make sure that yeah, I can record it. It's just a matter of uploading it. So but I'm working on it and I have someone working with me who's teaching me. Actually he ain't teaching me, he's doing it. I don't know why. Give him credit for what he's doing. Rod, good looking out. <laughs> so on that note, guys, I will bid you a good night. I appreciate y'all. If y'all need me, hit the link in my bio. It's not to say it's bad, but it's good. Click OK and schedule an appointment with me. Okay. I will try my very best to get back with you if you call me.